Hello guys and welcome back to another video on my channel. Now today it is another episode of Talk of the Hatters. In today's video we are going to do a season review. I've done this for the last, I say, two to three years now on my channel. You guys seem to enjoy these types of videos. So I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on Luton's overall season, which has of course been a fantastic one. And then, well, and also talk about the Huddersfield game first, the second leg, and then we'll go into the season review, talk about the season as a whole, my play of the season, uh, the signing of the season, the best game, the worst game, who needs to improve for next season, who's to look out for for next season, all of these things to talk about in today's video. But first, let's talk about our last game of the season, which was unfortunately against Huddersfield in the semi-final. Unfortunately, we are not going to Wembley, which... You know, I felt in the second leg, we were the better side. I did think we were. I thought we had the better chances as well. I thought if Cornick took his chances, you know, it is a different game. I did think we dealt with Huddersfield quite well. It was a lack of concentration. It was a bit of quality that won it. You know, Huddersfield, before we played them, I mentioned in my videos that the only way they're going to beat us is by counter-attacks and also um, set-pieces. Both of their goals, one was a counter-attack and the other one was a set-piece. That's why Huddersfield are where they are in the league. They've done extremely well at doing that. I, I, I didn't think they could break us down. And I thought we done ext well. I thought we defended extremely well throughout the whole, um, you know, the second leg. I thought the atmosphere at Huddersfield was absolutely brilliant um, for both set of fans. You're just going at each other, singing our hearts out. It was great. But the difference between Huddersfield and Luton, they've got Jordan Rhodes, who's scored so many goals at this level in the Championship. Yes, Jerome has scored a lot of goals, but he's at the wrong age. You know, he isn't at the age of Jordan Rhodes. You know, Rhodes is coming well he's pretty much in his prime jerome is 35 years old you know probably gonna retire soon so the fact that you know we are competing against these teams you know huddersfield they've got a much you know yes they've signed a lot of free signings but they've got a much bigger wage bill than what luton have so the fact that we we are able to com compete it just shows you how well we've done this season but it's been a fantastic year at the start of the season, I predicted Luton to finish 10th. That was my prediction. We've done even better than that. We finished um, we finished 6th. Great season. It's been a fantastic year. Don't think many people thought at the start we would finish in the playoff places. I know I've, we've repeated that so many times over the last few weeks. But, you know, we didn't really have a right to finish in those playoff places. But we've worked harder. We've recruited better. We've been a lot better tactically against other teams. We've done so much better than certain other teams have in this division. And it's full credit to the board, the fans obviously cheering the, play the players on, and also, of course, the players themselves as well. It's been a great year. It has been an absolute great year. But if we talk about from the start to finish, first off the season, I thought it was a little bit slow. It, inconsistent results. But we were still touching distance from those playoff places. I think because we had such a massive rebuild in the summer, not many players got used to each other. Um, it was hard to obviously build a run of form because of you know players not knowing how each other play, injuries impacting. COVID was still a big thing in the first half, the well, first part of the season. So it was hard to build some consistency. But at the start of the second half of the season, from January like to the end of the season, we were consistent. We actually were in the top three most points out of anyone in the championship we got big results against certain teams in the league we actually went the whole season without losing against to against any of the top 10 sides in the championship at home which is a great record to have because you want to get points at home especially against the well against your playoff rivals you know so the fact that we managed to do that is just a massive credit to ourselves and yeah the second half of the season because I think we were able to put a more consistent lineup, uh, line out, um, lineup um, every single week. It made us more better. I felt we was able to then build on um, consistent results, and we got we generated more points. And I think we, did, because of how well we performed in the second half, deserved um, an opportunity to compete in the playoff places. You know, certain teams, you know, it fell off. We had massive injury problems. I'm pretty certain. 
if we didn't have those injury um, problems that we have at the moment at the club, you know, we would have actually beaten Huddersfield quite easily. I really do believe that without a number one goalkeeper, without Adebayo, Fred, Pelly, Luke Berry, you know, they, those are key players there. They really are. Whether people like that or not, they're key players which could have helped us. Um, so, we weren't the strongest heading into those playoff places, but we still made... Um, everyone proud at the club which is what we want at the end of the day now if we're going to talk about the best game in the championship for Luton you know you got your bought that Bournemouth game at home that you know pretty much winning it on the last kick of the game you got Hull away you know great away day out um James Bree with a fantastic free kick we talk about Nottingham Forest at home what an important game that was it was such an entertaining match and yeah, just the importance of it. Nottingham Forest were absolutely flying, yet we still got the three points. And then I've, thro I've thrown in Red in there because although it's not, it wasn't the most glamorous of games, you know, the fact that we managed to, you know, confirm a playoff place from beating Red in just makes it a little bit special. And then don't forget as well, beating Preston the way we did at home midweek, that's also up there as well. So we've had some pretty good home performances, but. Obviously, the one standout, and I don't think it could be beat this year, it is the Bournemouth game, which is the game of the season for me. You know, winning it at the last kick of the game, of the way Bournemouth were, they've gone up, you know, and we managed to beat them, perform better than them. You know, it was a great game to watch, absolutely fantastic. And the way we won it, you know, for me, that's why it's game of the season. If we talk about the worst game of the season, there's not many negatives from this season, in fact. But there are two standouts. Um, it's Birmingham at home, which we lost 5-0. And also the Fulham game, which was 7-0. Now, you could obviously go, yeah, Fulham's definitely the worst result because of, you know, the manner of how Fulham won the match. We had so many players out. So, for me, it won't, it won't be the worst game of the season. For me, the worst game of the season is Birmingham at home. I don't think any team should lose 5-0 at home. That's not good. Fulham have beaten other teams 7-0 in the league this year. They've beaten loads of teams. They've thrashed loads of teams. That's normal for Fulham. For us, what's not normal is losing 5-0 at home to Birmingham. And for that reason, Birmingham for me is the worst game of the season for Luton. No, no excuses. You shouldn't lose 5-0 at home um, against anyone, in fact. But as we did it to Birmingham, who didn't have the best of seasons, that's the reason why um, Birmingham is the worst game of the season for me. Looking at signings of the season, now obviously Burks had a great year um, at the back. Yes, injuries have affected him a little bit, but he still had a good year. Alan Campbell, first half of the season, he wasn't the greatest, but I think second half of the season, he was, he's one of our most important players. He had a absolutely fantastic um, second half of the season. Fred Onyedimer as well. I think he's coming to the side really well. He's had to change position a few times, adapted a little bit because of the way we are playing. But he's also had a good year. Jerome, considering his age and the step up from League One to Championship, although he has played Championship football before, he's still, you know, at his age, to still perform the way he has done, it's still fair play to him. So those are the, you know, nominees but I am going to have to give it to Alan Campbell. I think how consistent he was in the second half of the season. I don't if I think without him, and you have to remember as well, he wasn't fit. Uh, well, he was fit throughout the whole second half. Really, the fact that he was there in the middle, he doesn't stop running. I think he's now made that position his own. I think he's now undroppable. If he starts the season the way he has done. Um, it, from the second half, then he ain't going to get dropped next year. He will cement that place, will be his own. He will have that and no one will take it from him because that's how well he's performing in the second half of the season. So for me, Alan Campbell is my signing of the season. Hopefully he can add a few more goals and assists to his name, but he did get a couple, but hopefully he can add more next season in the championship. Looking at the next ca category, which we are going to talk about is the players who need to improve for next season. Now, the one player which comes straight into my mind is Musway. Now, Musway, when I see him, he, he does have lots of potential. I wouldn't sell him. I've seen fans come out online and say, we should get rid of him. I don't think we should. He's got lots of potential, um, in my opinion. I think there is a good player there. I just think he needs to... Needs, some work needs to be done with him. That He isn't the finished article yet. I remember when Cornick was at the club and he gives me Cornick vibes when he first came to the club. Um, 
you got to remember Cornet came in League Two, League Two Championship. It's, it's two different things, but I do think Musway, there's some, there's a player there, you know, and I think when we unlock it, um, we're going to see a great player, a, a really good player here. Nathan Jones has come out and said that in training, he's he's unbelievable. So he's obviously doing something right. It's just we need to translate training to the pitch. And I believe that could happen next season. I don't think we are playing a system at the moment which is helping him. I, I, I don't think we're playing a system that's helping a lot of players at the club. Like your Mendes Gomez, like your Fred on your Dimmers. But I feel next year we are going to play a more attacking system. I do think we are going to go from three at the back to a back four. I really do think we are going to do that. And I do think we're going to see players like Musway and... Um, uh, Mendes Gomez play a lot more next season but Marsway for me does need to improve I think he should have had a lot more goals I think he should have contributed to the team more he goes missing in a few games but I do think next year he's the one that needs to improve because they, they, they for me there's a player there we just need to get out of him next category we are going to talk about is the one to look at for next season so which players which you know may be a standout player and I've got two players here I've got Thorpe, which we signed from Tottenham, um, the midfielder, and also Mendes Gomez. Now, Mendes Gomez, I don't believe he's had a proper chance. I don't think we're also, as already mentioned, I don't think we play the system that's correct for him. He's more of a winger. He can play as a number 10, but he's more of a winger. He's naturally a winger. We signed him from Morecambe as a winger. He, he, we've been playing him as a centre mid at times. But for me, he's, he's definitely a, a winger. And I do think we will see him a lot more next year. I have a strong feeling that we are going to change our system next season. We are going to be more attacking next year, which will then benefit the likes of Mendes Gomez and Musway on your Denmark Cornick as well. I do think we are going to make that transition. So for me, Mendes Gomez is definitely a player to look out for for next year. I think he's got pace, he's got skill. Technically, he's very good. You know, so hopefully we do see him a lot more next year. I just don't think he's been given a real opportunity this year. Not a run-in in the side like other players have. Mosway's had a run-in. Fred Onya Dimas had a run-in. But Mendes Gomez is the one player that really hasn't really been given much of a look in. Every time I've seen him play in the cup games, I think he's, he's done well. But yeah, I don't think... Um, well, I personally think we need to see more of him next season. But Thorpe as well. Seeing him briefly, he looks really good. He could be a big, massive, um, well, he could be a massive shot for next year. See how well he can develop over, over the summer. And, yeah, hopefully we do see him a lot more than we have done this season. And then, finally, we are going to talk about player of the season. And for me, there's no debate, really. If Alan Campbell had a much better first half of the season, then I probably would have gave it to him. But Naismith, for me has been the most consistent. He's done extremely well. We've kept a lot of clean sheets this season and, you know, it has been down to him. He's been extremely fit as well. Lack of injuries from him. We've had major injury crisis at the back um, this season, but Naismith has been the one player that's played majority of those games. We've kept majority of our clean sheets with him in the side. He's come up with some important assists, some important goals as well. And for that reason, Cal Naismith, for me, He's been an absolute rock at the bat for us. So he is my player of the season. What a signing he has been since we signed him 18 months ago on a free transfer from Wigan. Who would have thought he would have done the impact that he has done? You know, I don't think many people would have thought that. But wow, what a great player he has been for us this season. So guys, that is the end of my season review it's been a great year for me predicting us to finish 10th in the championship to us actually finish finishing six you know it, it has been a really great year i'm so proud of the players and hopefully you know next year we can repeat it you know i do think we are going to get better next year i really do it's a bold statement but i, I do think we could potentially finish top five you know as bonkers as that sounds i, I really do because under nathan jones we always improve we always do it but yeah, guys, that is the end of the video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this season review. Make sure you drop a like on the video, video if you did. Comment below your, you know, signing of the season, um, your player of the season, the player that needs to improve. Um, all, talk about all the categories which I've already talked about in this video. Let me know your thoughts um, down in the comments. Also, give me your thoughts as a whole, as you know across the season how did you make of this season let me know down in the comment section of this video 
Don't forget to follow me across all my social media if you haven't done already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.